before we get started. Uh, this particular talk is one of the monthly workshops where we just touch on one of many subjects that can be related to yoga, wellness, and kind of other modalities that support uh, well-being in life. So I'm going to just give a little bit of information on this subject today. And then if you have questions, you can reach out to me. The descriptions and details of how you can reach out to me will be um, below. So if you have not watched any of my talks before, or maybe you've seen videos, but you're still like, who is this person? <laughs> so uh, my name is Carmita. I'm the creator of SWIM, Smiles Yoga Wellness Meditation. I'm a 500-hour yoga teacher, which just means I've had 500 hours of training um, to get my certification, learning the basics, the history, the philosophies, the anatomy, um, and um, training um, in the modalities uh, of yoga. And I'm also a Tai Chi teacher, uh, a Ayurvedic practitioner, vegan nutritionist, and wellness coach, and dog mom. <laughs> so... That's just a little bit about me. If you are interested in learning more about any of those services, you can reach out to me also through those same details that'll be listed below. The talk today is about the embodiment of the masculine and feminine. So the embodiment or embodying the masculine and feminine energies. This is something that is known um, in yoga, depending on if you go to a studio, depending on if you study more of the Eastern philosophies or history of yoga and Eastern practices. Uh, but this could also be something new. If you have taken a yoga class and, or maybe you've predominantly done it in Western, like the US, uh, UK, France, Italy, Spain, um, or South American practices, the practice of yoga may be seen still depending on where you take it as a physical workout or exercise. But there is a whole other aspect that is a little bit more Eastern, um, more a little bit historical related and energetically related uh, that goes beyond the eye of, uh, you know, what can be seen. So that's what we're going to touch on here. So embodiment, embodiment or embodying is meaning of a quality or feeling. Uh, a representation or expression and or also a physical form of something like a character trait or a description of someone. So these feminine and masculine um, embodiments, basically these are energies or characteristics and traits that are associated with either masculine or feminine that will be discussed. And I will give a few examples of what that is. So masculine related to male, most commonly, uh, what you may see on TV, what you may be or see and connected to in life. Uh, it's related to the physical male. Uh, and on an energetic level, though, it is associated with the lower chakras. That is uh, another kind of topic there and, and modality that can be connected to yoga are chakras. They say we have these seven main chakras, but there are many more within the body and some around or near in our space or aura. And they each have a relation to the body and relation to what connects us to this earth, what connects us in this reality. So when I'm discussing lower chakras, Think about where your uh, middle, midsection would be at center or just above the belly button and then down below. That would be uh, lower chakras. And the root chakra is kind of right where kind of the reproductive areas would be. Another way to think of masculine is uh, think of, and it doesn't really have to be the first, but possibly the first one you came into contact with of the male figure um, in your life. So for some people, that's their father, uh, the person who literally helped uh, create <laughs> them into being uh, with their, you know, the mother of them. And uh, a traditional role of that might be then a, a male physical person. And it may be someone who is the provider of the family along as their creator. Going to feminine. 
related to female, most commonly related more to the feeling or knowing of something. Feminine is associated with the higher chakras. So it might be related to the throat chakra in this region. It deals with communication. I also then can go up to where they say we have our third eye. They always say women can be psychic or intuitive or within the head emotions. Uh, and so that is the higher chakra region. There are more other little chakras and things there too. Um, meridians that can be associated with that. But that is maybe already giving you an idea of when you think of a feminine. Uh, and so who was the first female figure that you came into contact with in your life? Typically for some, this is their mother, as I mentioned, the father, mother, creator of you in the physical form. And or it may have been, you know, to memory, you know, a grandmother, uh, a school teacher, uh, possibly a nurse. Uh, these are roles that are also related typically to, to feminine physical form roles, especially historically. Uh, now we have, there's more, you know, men in nursing or teaching roles, but back then that could have been, you know, those were nurturing roles. Those were caregiving roles. And so typically a caregiver, you may have been in contact with would have been a female. And just think about that. How were those interactions, you know, with that person? How was that person? And um, some who see this may already be like, wow, you know, what do you mean then by that? Because your male figure or female figure may have been a bit different. Maybe you only had one figure. Those are exceptions to this rule, but this is kind of these traditional thoughts and ideas related to masculine and feminine. So when it comes to moving away from masculine and feminine roles, masculine and feminine figures, and thinking about how people are, or if you know, you're know you an adult, then thinking about masculine men, physical men in, in the lives they've had contact with, or even just little conversations with, and or females that you've had conversations with or connections with in life, uh, moving kind of away from those physical forms, but bringing in the idea and concepts of how they are, what are their character traits, what are their personality traits, uh, that comes into this present kind of uh, position of both these energies are within you. And what is meant by that is when you take the physical role or traditional roles of masculine, those are typically traits that you can also have, even if you are not a physical male, but it's just that they are seen typically more in physical males. Now for feminines, if you're a feminine and you're thinking about women in life and these figures, if you're leaving or taking away the physical form of woman or female, but you're bringing in those character traits, the nurturing, the caregiving, uh, that is something that no matter if you're male or female, you will have inside you. Basically, it brings together both these traits. Everyone has both of those traits that are seen from physical male and females, and they are within all of us. And so within that, we all both have masculine and feminine traits, which or are described as masculine and feminine energies inside us. Another way to look at this, which I'll touch on just a teeny bit, is yang and yin or yin and yang. So masculine and feminine, masculine yang, feminine yin. And it's kind of like that concept. If you've heard of yin and yang, yang and yin, it's always kind of this, this duality, this dark and light, day and night, and that we both that we all have both these sides of all these dualities within us. And even in the bodies, it is known in, in especially things like martial arts and Qigong and Tai Chi that certain parts of our bodies carry yin energy and yang energy, receiving and releasing. So masculines are known to be the providers. 
they're giving, they're giving their, their time at work, they're building, they're creating, they're doing, they're having successes. Females are known to be receivers on the receiving end. We're getting from the masculines, even though we can be caregivers and we release life into the world. It's this other concept of, you know, we're receiving these, these things that the masculine is providing. We receive love, we receive care. And, you know, some people, they receive income from their masculine. It can also be looked at from a more sexual standpoint. The men give the seed and the women receive and then bring that life into life. And that's one of the few times of life where from a certain energetic standpoint, we're actually, we're giving something, we're giving this life, but we get received the seed to then give the life. So, which is a whole nother <laughs> subject in itself, but um, that's just a little, these are little ways that can trigger points in the mind and in the neurons that can build new awareness that can start to get you thinking, but can also be examples, um, jumping right into examples of masculine and feminine, just to give you idea, because we all comprehend things in different ways. Uh, we all comprehend and learn concepts and uh, lessons in life in different ways. So I want to be able to support that um, and by any means that I really can um, within this frame of time in this present moment. So that's why though, if you have questions or something is confusing, please let me know. But hopefully this helps you to understand how these two energies, it's putting that picture in mind of giving an idea of what they look like um, in this reality and understanding how you have both these energies within you, uh, which we're going to touch on a little bit more next. Because one of the big things about this talk is, you know, how can knowing and understanding and touching on these energies and, and philosophies and concepts and lessons and all this good stuff, how can this support you in life? You know, what's the point of this information? And really, this can be very personal. This is something that, you know, support can be dependent on the desired outcome because, you know, some people, they may say, oh, you know, if you know someone who, you know, is very nurturing, is very loving, likes to dress in physical forms of female with hair done, eyes done, makeup on, dresses, heels, and things, those are known as more feminine characteristics. That's someone embodying their feminine. Now, someone more who maybe works in engineering, who works in data science, who's very logical, who's thinking about math. Uh, that is someone who or works with computers. That's someone who's more in the masculine energies typically. So you can switch. The energies that you bring out in that shine from you can vary. And so with this, it can get you thinking about, well, if I work within a certain something, like, you know, am I more in my masculine or feminine? And maybe if you're more in one energy or the other, you're looking to figure out how to balance it. And so in the end, especially, I'm going to give some examples of how you can balance these energies a bit, or maybe you just get it from what I'm about to step into next, which is, you know, discussing some of the character traits of these energies. And you could think about that. Like if you're more logical, how can you dive into you a side that's more the feminine because logic is created to masculine? Or if you're feeling a bit flighty or if you're feeling a bit lost in your arts and your practice and your craft, but you're not so keen on the business side and how to maybe make income off it, you're more in your feminine and you're looking to dive more in your masculine. So certain times of life kind of pull these certain energies from us or request certain energies from us. And so it's kind of one's own journey to figure out and find joyous ways to find balance within them and to welcome other parts of self to shine and kind of blossom and be seen that can help to balance out these energies so that they, so that they're offering you that in that degree, energetic support. Now, something I'm not going to touch too much on is that duality of light and dark. So within the masculine and feminine, there can be 
so-called too much of one energy and the other. And that's when you can kind of start to feel a little off. You can start to feel like something's not right. You feel depleted, exhausted, hyperactive, or some sort of extreme uh, trait or characteristic. And it, that is can go into a whole other side of conversation too. That's why I'm not going to dive too much into it today. But it is something to note because it can get you thinking once again, maybe as you're looking to balance out these energies, that's something to kind of, kind of take into consideration, you know, is there something of too much, you know, there's a saying of, you know, good comes in small doses type of thing. And it's just that, you know, not overindulging in something or becoming too extreme in something going too far on one direction or the other, that can kind of lean into what can be seen as negative in our reality, um, or, in uh, stagnant and non-progressive. So if that's something that you have questions with, please feel free to reach out to me. So going into examples though, and some of these can be cited as light and dark, kind of positive, negative, or just as they are, um, characteristics of the masculine and masculine energies and or yang energy is someone who's logical, someone who maybe is in, Things of power in a powerful position, strong, strong willed, strong minded, and strong in physical strength. Uh, someone who takes action, sometimes taking action um, and having dominant or alpha figures can be known as aggressive or alpha traits. Someone who's independent, enjoys their freedom uh, and control. Um, someone who likes to have control of things. Maybe they have their schedule a certain way, their day a certain way their calendar structured a certain way and their work structured a certain way. Uh, someone who works in mechanics, that can be very masculine. Those are masculine traits. On the opposite side of that, the feminine, our yin, the yin energies. And that can go, those masculine traits can go for female or male. You know, the physical form of male and the physical form of female. And then the feminine, the same. This could be you, your neighbor, your children, your, you know, your pets, whatever. Um, these are just traits that carry on um, that can come out of a person. Like I could be aggressive, but it, I could also be creative. So there can be a mishmash of them. Remember, it's about learning how they can support you and balancing them out. Uh, if one feels like it's becoming a little bit too heavy um, or too much for yourself, not that someone else is saying, you're this or that, but you checking in with yourself going, oh, this is how I feel today, but I would like to accomplish this, or this is going on, but how do I find, you know, something to mellow me out or something like that. So that's kind of the understanding there. So with the feminine and yin, it can be intuitive, creative, that nurturing, caregiving, as I mentioned, whimsical, flow, flowing, playful, vulnerable uh feminines as once again it's kind of interesting because men can give and be in that feminine but women giving that caregiving giving a lot women sometimes when they get in too much and are an extremist of something of any of these and you, they feel depleted typically that tends to be a female thing where they feel depleted from at home doing the home and the work and the plays and the kids and the dog and this and everyone else that can be they're too much in that feminine and maybe they need some of that masculine energy to come in to gain confidence or to gain the will or strength to put a stop to overindulging, overgiving, and overexhausting themselves. Now, masculines are also known to be in like workaholism or even uh, certain ad addictions that they can get into and that power hungry motive. Uh, that can be someone that can be seen as alpha or someone that's so much in their masculine that maybe they're ignoring their relationships. They're not checking in with their partner or their kids or their parents, or they haven't seen their friends in <laughs> like weeks or months because they're doing so much for work and they're working, 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 working. And that in itself can be a depletion. That is an extremist thing. So they can kind of tap in and go, wait, let me step back here. Let me pause. How can I tap into my feminine? How can the masculine just give themselves a break, offer themselves some self-care, 
allow a little vulnerability to, to, you know, just relax in the sun. And the sun is another thing that is related to masculine energy, but being playful and relaxing and offering self-care can be that feminine dose of energy that they needed to just rest and relax and enjoy that sunshine. And, or they could tap in a bit with their nighttime rest and relaxation at night and not work too late. And the moon, they can grab into that moonlight. The moon is typically related. That is feminine energy. It's related to the night to femininity. And what's interesting with that is uh, in languages, typically the moon is a feminine word. So you have uh, for French, so for Lune or even uh, for Spanish, Luna, La Luna, La Lune, or, you know, that's typically feminine. And masculine, you have Du Soleil, that's typically masculine. So it's interesting to see that in the forms also. Okay, so with that balance, so I already gave a little bit of example there and kind of, you know, how to tap into that balance. How do you balance and work with these energies? Basically, when you're learning about masculine and feminine energies, if you look at other synonyms or words related to very domineering traits, dominant, alpha, strong, demanding, aggressive, like work filled. Those are kind of these courageous. These are power words. When you think of these power words, they're typically related to masculine and masculinity traits. Doing, if you're a person who takes action, that's in your masculine. If you notice the feminine is more of that restful, playful, relaxive, um, relaxing, relaxation, indulging. Uh, you know, those are a little bit more soft. Those can be a bit more soft words. And your body can kind of pick up on these things. And maybe you feel a certain way when you hear a certain word. That's already your body signaling like, oh, this is masculine. This makes me feel one way. This is feminine. I feel another way with that. And so you can take a moment to kind of just tap in and just think about, you know, or even write, if you want, take a moment, maybe grab your phone, grab a piece of paper and a pen or pencil or crayon, whatever, and sit and think about like, what are, what are characteristics that you have? What are, what are character traits? What is a way that someone would describe you. And if you don't want to write it down or maybe you don't have a pencil near you, maybe there's someone near you and you could pause this video for a moment and just ask them, you know, hey, you know, so-and-so, what do I do? What do I seem like? You know, um, something that I just kind of fell into and, I, and a lot of people tend to fall into, and we talked about this in another group that was about energies, uh, I've had a lot of talks actually about energies with folks lately is, uh, you know, in the West, it's just more common for people to be in their masculine females or males in physical form. And however that resonates for you. Uh, but it just seems to be known that, you know, we go, 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 we overindulge, we do, 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 we make money, money, money. And that strong strength, courageous, you know, in for work is just, just adored so to speak here uh and you might not see that some countries you do and some countries you don't but it is a beautiful thing the fact that i've seen more talks about this coming up and a lot of groups that i'm in and they really dove into it and uh it's nice to see that it's becoming a, a topic of such to speak on because it shows just like it, that there's a balance, that there's a need for some balancing out, uh, especially in Western and U United States, American society. And so that starts with conversation. And so it can help to just sit and think about what traits do you have, you know, and what traits do you feel are, are leveled out and balanced already? And what, is there anything that maybe you're doing that's, you know, do you like to work and are you working to the detriment of, you're ignoring your partner, your relationships, your parents, your friends, or whatnot, or even your pet, 
or your plants or your home? Or, you know, are you someone who you think about, oh, I want to work out, but you're not at all, not doing anything to take action because being too much in the feminine can also being in that restfulness, being in that playful place, but to a little bit more than usual. Like it's, a, we all love rest and to have that and sleep and take a weekend and a vacation. But are you or someone, you know, in so much rest where it's literally been months and months and months and months of rest. And you say you want to complete something, a project or workout or whatnot, and you're just not getting it done. That would be someone that's then in the, in your inner, in your feminine energy quite a bit. And so you might want to bring in some of that masculine energy to balance out and take some action. It doesn't have to be clean your whole house in one day or work out for six hours or run a marathon, but just little bits, little bits to balance out. Something to think about. All right. So something that relates to this kind of light and dark, or if you're looking to balance out the masculine or a balanced masculine may look as such and be described as such as a grounded person, someone who adds reason to logic, someone who's doing, but maybe not overstepping, overdoing, overworking. Someone who has achievements and is achieving, but are they, as one would might call, an overachiever? Are they so in their competitiveness that they're doing whatever they can, letting go of reason and logic and just going, going, going extremist because they have to chase? The chase becomes almost more of the reason for achieving the dopamine levels that get kicked up when it happens. Um, a provider, but a caring provider, someone who checks in with their partner, their family, their friends, their pets, uh, and a level of confidence. You know, confidence can be a good thing. We don't want to be too low and have no self-esteem, no self-confidence, but we just don't want to be, like I said, it's that overachieving, overconfident, extremist ego, where it leads into like egotistical type of um, characteristics and traits. So a good level of confidence with a good level of understanding. Balancing the feminine. Someone who's patient, but maybe not too patient to where when someone said they were going to help them do something, the feminine is scared to ask for, you know, an update. You know, we can only have so much patience with things, including ourselves. Someone who's caring, but not so caring where they're depleted. Uh, someone who allows inclusion. Inclusion is thinking about others. So you want everyone to feel included, including oneself. Someone who's in tune, it can relate to this psychic ability, this intuitive kind of structure in tune with self and other, and also when self needs care and love and or other is feeling neglected and is looking for a little bit of care and love. Uh, openness, gentleness, you know, to be open and gentle, uh, open to ideas, open to reason and logic, welcoming this masculine idea of, you know, we can have these ideas and these beautiful stories and all these things, but let's add a little reason to it. Let's add a little logic to it. Let's add a little, what they would call sensibility or kind of down to earth knowledge, something that brings, you know, this balance between, okay, you want to do this, but how can we get there? And it makes sense that we don't overindulge in something, that we don't, you know, over deplete or that we're just stuck in planning and all these ideas and nothing gets done. So this is what can help to balance out the embodiment of kind of given awareness to what can help um, to understanding the embodiment of masculine and feminine energies. Now, as I mentioned, this and other workshops that I have posted are just a, such a tiny piece in part just to touch on this subject. So please, if you would like to learn more in understanding the masculine and feminine energies to discuss more examples, please reach out to me. Uh, I will put the info, as I mentioned, in the description. You can also see in the corner, if you go to carmitasmiles.com or you Google smiles, yoga, wellness, meditation, you can find my information and reach out to me and let me know if you have questions about this. Before we go, I just want to give a couple 
examples of what I found through my own research. And I thought this article was very helpful, um, LinkedIn. And it's just a couple examples of how to spot masculine and ener feminine energies. I'm not going to go through them all, but just a little bit. And some of these might sound a little bit repetitive of what I already spoke on. So masculine energy is all about taking action. Masculine people love building and immediately fixing problems. This is something where if you're in a relationship with someone and typically this is a thing where it's feminine energy to discuss an issue or a problem. The masculine, by you discussing this issue or problem, masculine energy will be like, this is how we fix the problem. This goes into a whole other subject. I have a workshop coming up on this where in relationships, it's about communication and understanding communication between the two. And we go through exercises that work on communication, especially for couples of someone who's more than likely more in their masculine and the other person more than likely is in their feminine if they made it to this far in, in the workshop or, or whatnot. Um, but it could also be a new couple that is figuring out where their energy is or they're trying to understand their partner's energy. But with this, it's typically and traditionally seen as the feminine always says, you know, why is he trying to change or fix me? Why is he da 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 da? I just want to de decompress and talk. So if you're talking to someone in masculine energy, no matter how that resonates with you, and you are in your feminine energy and you're speaking about your issue, your problem, know that that person most likely in their masculine energy is going to want to fix their problem. I had this uh, just recently in my own partnership conversation where I was discussing something and in my masculine instantly went into, well, what's certain? He started asking me these questions about, well, you know, what's the best time to have class? Then, you know, it, are there more people? Would you have more students in class if you did the morning instead of the evening and da, da, da. And I went through and it took me a minute to realize like, oh, he, he is hearing me. And I, th and I think maybe he thinks I'm complaining or speaking of an issue. I was just talking on the subject of um, and relating to and being open as he was talking about his time and what he's been up to lately. And I was discussing what I've been up to. Uh, and so I was just discussing these classes, not even thinking like that could have sounded like a complaint. And he was asking me to like kind of look and weigh my options. But then I mentioned that, you know, I, I'm not a morning person. I'm typically an evening person. I like to play under the moonlight. So I'm an evening yoga teacher. Um, and in the early morning and in the evening, it tends to balance out. You have about the same amount of people in either class because there are other evening people that are not so into the morning and other morning people. He saw it as this issue. She said that she's trying to figure out best time for classes. Let's look at it from a logical point. What's going to What's going to have the most students? What's going to bring in the most income? And that type of thing. So that's an example of feminine and masculine. Another example, masculine energy is protective. This is why feminine women love it because they look for a partner to protect them. They want to feel safe and are looking for energy of protection. Masculine, man, strong, stable. <laughs> so right there. Women, I, I am that feminine. That is when I indulge my feminine energy. I don't necessarily need a hero but it would be nice to come home to someone who can just offer me a place to settle and rest, which still is a form of safety, uh, but a different kind of form. Feminine energy, creative, inspiring energy creates life, beauty, stimulating, nurturing, supportive. That tends to be more feminine energy, empathetic, emotional, passionate, Typically, they say that masculines are not in touch with their emotions, they're not in touch with their head and their heart, um, that they just, in their roots, uh, or they're strong-headed. <laughs> so they might be in touch with the head, but it skips over the heart and goes down to the grounding roots. Um, so women, we tend to be in that emotional, that communicative, that throat chakra, um, type of thing, that loving energy. So these are just examples of feminine and masculine energy also. These traits can be mixed. It can be that you are in the form of a physical male and you carry both feminine and masculine energies. And you even may be more in your feminine energy. And then you may attract a female form or another form. Uh, take how that resonates. You know, that is going to balance you out. That is someone that you don't want to argue with or you don't want to be too stagnant with. So they are someone who typically opposites attract because then it balances people out. Sometimes people will be like, well, how did Joe get with Susie when Joe likes to go mountain climbing and Susie just wants to sit at home and knit? They balance each other's energies out. 
Um, me and my partner, so much the same, but so different. We balance each other out. Um, I mentioned my communication channel from the start and beginning. Uh, him over the years, he's gone like that. But when I first met him, it was more, he would be a little bit more like he was more quiet. He's still a little bit more quiet. And so he's very logical in his thinking as and and problem solving. And I'm a bit more kind of whimsical and like I'll I'll just be in my loving nurturing and do the things because I'm passionate about it uh without bringing in certainty. <laughs> so um these are different ways of life. These are different things, but I also have certain things that I'm definitely in my masculine with. Uh, and he's in his feminine ways. And so you might have these things in your life where you might feel a little bit more feminine some days, might feel a little bit more masculine. And so it's learning if you're looking to balance these out, uh, to add a little more or less of something in your life, it's just thinking about uh, those energies and how to tap into it. So another way that masculines can tap into their feminine, journaling, dancing, letting go, enjoying the arts, uh, pottery, painting, comedy, uh, you know, reading, writing a book. Feminines, instead of the enjoyment of watching a comedy or a romantic film, it would be taking action to actually be a part of one of those in physical form. Uh, it would be maybe being in mechanics, being in math, working with computers, um, working in schedules, assertiveness, those types of things to kind of balance each other out. But it starts really with checking in with yourself first, going back to that, you know, if you're pausing the video, or if you're asking someone else how they see you, what, what traits you have, personality traits, and then going from there, because then you can start to put these traits in and in kind of in their, in their box, in their line and see, oh, I have more of these traits. These are feminine or, oh, I have more of these masculine traits. Hmm. Okay. So how do I get the opposite and how do I welcome that in life in a way that's going to bring joy? So let me know how that goes. Check in, share with me, drop a comment. Let me know, uh, you know, how do you feel in these energies? What are ways maybe that you like to express and work within these energies uh, to balance them out? Or maybe at certain times of life, your life requests more masculine and your life sometimes requests more feminine. I'd love to hear from you. I'd love to, you know, understand uh, where you are with your energies and how you maybe indulge or release or take action just to, to work within them and balance them out. And then check out other workshops that are uh, coming up. So you can find them on the Eventbrite page. I'll have that link in the description too. I want to thank you for your time, for your interaction, and I wish you the best. Many blessings.